Then there are other cash benefits that uh, the entity, sorry, the individual uh, will be receiving during his employment. And these are going to be stated directly in the question and they will be treated as discriminatory or non-discriminatory. And that is what you have about what I listed here in the point five. So ta taxation of pay, amend, uh, paid made to employees, payments made to employees. So any payment to employees on a non on, on a non discriminatory basis, meaning all not, not meaning that all eligible employees shall not be included, and I've told you that already. But then, if it is made on a discriminatory basis, it shall be what included. That is the idea about that, and I've already explained that point to you. So when it comes to cash benefits these are the things you need to understand there is it discriminatory non-discriminatory the treatment is going to be there if it is a bonus know the rules if it is an overtime know the rules that's the cash benefits that we have but then let's flip it a little bit let's flip it a little bit let's say that let's let's forget a moment okay let's forget a moment that the person has been employed, and let's say the person is a casual staff. Okay, so if the person is a casual staff, how do we tax that person? Okay, and you can see that in the principal document on number six, and the principal document, temporary staff, and then casual staff. How do we tax them? How do we tax them? How do we tax them? So, if the person is a temporary worker, a payment to a temporary worker is taxed as if that worker was a permanent worker. Thus, the individual graduated tax rate applies. That's it. So probably you are just, uh, you are uh, employed temporarily we're gonna be taxing you as though you are permanently employed in that case. So maybe you are on probation, okay? So they give you three months probation that if you work well, we're gonna retain you. So as far as you're on a probation, the period for probation, all the salary that will be paid to you, you will be taxed as though you are a permanent person. But then if it happens that you're a casual worker, I mean, as and when, we need people, we bring you in, then payment to casual workers shall be subject to a tax of what? 5% final withholding tax. So this is where the person is not in our employment. We've not given the person a deal. So it's a casual worker. I mean, we, we bring them in as and when whatever is needed. So we just paid uh, whatever payment we pay them, the employer withhold 5% the employer withhold 5%, the employer withhold 5%. So that is also about casual workers and temporary workers. So let's go back to make sense of exactly what we're doing. So playback, we are saying that there is chargeable income there to arrive at that, it is total accessible income minus your personal relief. To get your total accessible income, it is a total cash emolument minus benefit in kind. To get your total cash emolument, it is your basic salary plus your cash benefit. We've looked at how the basic salary work. We've looked at how the cash benefits is supposed to be treated. And we've looked at how overtime and all that supposed to be treated. So let's go to the other aspects to look at benefits in kind. How do we deal with that? So let's look at some of the benefits in kind that we may have in that case.
or maybe non-cash allowance. Under this category, this is where we're going to be dealing with things like loan benefits, accommodation, vehicle, and others. But let's start with the loan benefits. Let's start with the loan benefits. Loan benefits comes in when an employer lends money to an employee at a rate below the statutory rate. At a rate below the statutory rate. What, 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 what do we mean? What do we mean? So let's say that the employer is KK, lends money to the employee. And the money they lend to the employee is whatever amount. And they lend the money at an interest rate of, say, 5%. But the statutory rate is actually 25%. That means we are giving you free money. So that money we are giving you has to be subject to tax. But stay with me carefully here. The fact that the loan is coming from an employer to an employee does not mean, and, and it is below the statutory rate, does not mean it to be subject to tax because I'm going to explain that in a moment. So basically the idea is that the loan benefit that is going to be subject to tax is going to be equal to one fourth of the excess interest. I said one fourth, but I'm writing one two. This is the loan benefit that will be subject to tax. This is the figure we'll be including in the chargeable income. To be included in the chargeable income. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Now, like I said, it has to be from employer to an employee. The rate has to be below the statutory rate. And what we are going to be including in the chargeable income of the employee is one fourth of the interest, of the excess interest that the person should have paid. But there is another condition. So let's go back to our principal document and let's bring that up real quick. Here is it. So let me clean this up. Again, like I said, I use this in the course of the week for the advanced taxation people. That's why you're seeing this in. So let me just clean this up real quick. Now look at it. Taxation of loans. That's the rule number two on page what page three let's go for a loan benefit to be subject to tax the following conditions must be met oh okay so one the loan repayment exceeds 12 months oh all right all right so the repayment of the loan should exceed 12 months but there is a catch there. There is a catch. Look at the catch in the second point. The aggregate loan, both current and outstanding loan of the employee within the 12 months exceeds three months salary of the employee. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Now, you got to be careful here. And then the last thing is that the loan is from an employer to an employee. That one you know already. Now, the first and the second point, you got to be careful about them. Why is that? Because if the loan exceeds three months salary of the person, then the tax rule will apply. If the repayment of the loan exceeds 12 months, then the tax rule will apply. So then somebody will ask, Inshira, what if the loan is below the three months salary of the individual, but the repayment of the loan is more than 12 months? What do we do? In such cases, the rule we are explaining applies. So the first thing and the second thing in the question, one of them will be present. One of them will be present. So if the loan is below whatever, 12 months, and again, uh, below basic salary, three months basic salary of the individual, then the person shall not be subject to the payments of the one over four excess loan. Now let's make sense of this with a question, okay? Because uh, a question will really clarify what the heck we're talking about. So let's look at a question real quick. Let's go to our book and then let's look at a question there and the loan benefits real quick. There's a question I have there. Let's go there real quick. I forgot to put the page number down. So please give me a moment. Let me just scroll to that page real quick. Uh, okay, these are the non-cash benefit. That's on page 57. Probably I'll be talking about that. So let me just put it somewhere here. Mm, please stay with me. Let me bring in the loan. Yep, 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 yep. This is the question on page uh, 59. Please check it up if that is the same page you have in there. So page 59. So let's look at this question because it will solve the issues about the allowances we've been talking about as well as most importantly, the issue about uh, the loan really, really in that case. So page 57, prob probably. Let's look at it. So remember the principle we established. It should be from the employer to the employee. The aggregate of the loan exceeds three months salary. The loan shall be repaid in 12 months time. So let's make sense of it. Because you see, when you solve a question, the principle become more clear. Let's go. The requirements of this question, it's what we're going to be excited about. It says, Determine the loan benefits applicable to the three employees. Determine the loan benefits applicable to the three employees. So stay with me carefully and let's go through it. 